Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives. And become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash Radio Detectives. Before we do get started, I do want to uh, let you know the program is brought to you in part by the financial support of our listeners. I want to thank Scott for becoming a Patreon supporter. Uh, He's been uh, given to us regularly through PayPal. Um, And uh, at the master detective level of $15 or more a month, you can support this show on a regular basis at patreon.greatdetectives.net or a one-time basis, support.greatdetectives.net, and we also have a mailing address. Well, we're going to start out with our comments, and uh, we'll act, and it will be something we'll address at the end of the show. And uh, the comment comes from Randy, who writes, Randy writes, Jeff Chandler was a terrific actor. I'm sure that everyone on this page will know this trivia. But Chandler appeared on radio programs under two other professional names. Does everyone recall those names? Well, we'll see uh, how many of our listeners do. You can uh, just keep that question in mind, and we'll answer it after the show. Well, now it is time for today's episode of Michael Shane. And the title of this one is The Case of the Borrowed Heirloom. <laughs> car started skidding across the wet, slippery road. I tried to straighten it out, but I couldn't. After the hit on the head and the clip on the chin, this was one too many. Yeah, this is a third strike, our little Mike, and I went out. The New Adventures of Michael Shane, Private Detective, starring Jeff Chandler. Michael Shane, reckless, red-headed Irishman, is back again in his old haunts in New Orleans. This is your director, Bill Russo, inviting you to listen to another transcribed episode, which we call The Case of the Borrowed Heirloom. Nurse. Oh, nurse. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm looking for Clarence Drake's room. I'm Mike Shane. Oh, yes, Mr. Shane. Mr. Drake is expecting you. His room's right down the corner, if you follow me. Uh, look, I don't know this, Mr. Drake. Have you any idea why he sent for me? Well, no. He asked me to telephone a private detective for him. I found your name in the directory, so I called you. Oh, thanks. Mr. Drake pretty sick? Oh, no. No, he tripped. He fell down the stairs at his home two days ago, so his wife thought it best that he be brought here to the hospital for observation. This is Mr. Drake's room on the left. Okay, thanks. Come in, come in. Mr. Clarence Drake? Yes, yes, indeed. You're Michael Shane? Yeah, that's right. Good, good. You got here very promptly, Mr. Shane. Yeah. Uh, do you mind if I smoke? Oh, not at all. Hmm? Nice ladder. Oh, thanks. Yeah, Mr. Shane, I want you to run an errand for me. A very important errand. Oh? Yes. Pull open the drawer on that bed table, please. Okay. You see those keys? Mm Mm-hmm. The big one fits a strong box, which is built into the floor under my bed at home. Strong box? Yes. Now, I've written the address on this piece of paper. Hmm. That's out in the country ways, huh? I want you to go out there right away. Tell my wife I sent you. Have her show to my bedroom, and then... But first, be sure you're alone in my room. Alone? Oh, now, look, what's this I, all about? Let me finish, Mr. Shane. Go ahead. Now unlock the strong box. In it, you'll find a large black leather jewel case. Bring the case back to me. What's in the leather case, Mr. Drake? Shh, 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 shh. Huh? Not so loud. Well, now, look, what's all this hocus-pocus routine about? What's in the leather case? Mr. Shane, please, not so loud. I can't take any chances. Oh, now, look, if you're going to hire me, you better tell me what's in this mystery satchel I'm going to be lugging around. All right, all right. But first, are you sure we're alone here? Alone? 
Look, you, you don't see anyone else wandering around the room, do you? Nevertheless, I must be sure. Look out in the hall. Now, look, there's no one here. Please do as I say, Mr. Shane. Okay, okay. There, are you satisfied now? Yes. Okay, what's in the leather case, Mr. Drake? Lean over my bed. Oh, for crying out loud. Okay. Now, what's in the leather case? Nothing. What? It's empty, Mr. Shane. It's empty. In a moment, we'll return to the new adventures of Michael Shane and the case of the borrowed heirloom. Well, just about the time I figure I'm through being surprised at anything, I get a surprise. Like 60-year-old Clarence Drake telling me the jewel case he was sending me out to his house to get was empty. I was to bring it back to his hospital room and report everything that happened. Well, the whole deal sounded a little phony, but at least it was a deal, which was more than I'd had all week. So, an hour later, about 8 p.m., I was pushing the doorbell at the address Drake gave me. A gloomy old two-story house in the country. After a while, a woman opened the door. She was about 55, I guess, and her face was just as gloomy and forbidding as the house. Yes? Uh, Mrs. Drake? No. I'm Mrs. Lesburg, the housekeeper. Oh, well, uh, look, I'm Mike Shane. Mr. Drake sent me out here. Why? To get something of his and take it to him, okay? What is it? Oh, now, look, if it's all the same to you, I'll talk to Mr. Drake's wife. Come in. Pleasant woman. I followed her down the hall, and then she motioned me into a room on the right. I went in and waited. Like the rest of the house, this room looked tired and depressed. I stood looking out the window for a few minutes, and then I could feel someone staring at me. I turned around. There, standing in the doorway, was a woman about 30. Beautiful in an insolent sort of way. Hello. Yeah. Hello. I'm Lydia Drake. Oh? Mrs. Clarence Drake. You, you mean you're Mr. Drake's wife? What else? Well, go ahead. Hmm? Say it. Say what? What you thinking? What I'm Sure, thinking. young wife, old husband. She must have married him for his money. Oh, look, Mrs. Drake, I'm married sure you... Married for his money, sure. Take a look around you, Mr. Shane. This shabby room, the whole dilapidated, beaten-down house... Doesn't it look like we're just busting out all over with money, doesn't it? Look, Mrs. Drake, I was surprised that you were so young. That's all. As for why you married Mr. Drake, I'm sure that's none of my business. At any rate, I hadn't thought much about it one way or the other. I know. I know, I'm sorry. I'm sick and tired of hearing people talk about me. Watching the expression in their eyes when they look at me. They can't understand someone marrying a man like Mr. Drake because he was kind to her when... when she was his secretary. Because she was lonely... Oh, what does it matter? Why am I blitting it all out to you? I don't know. You uh, used to work for Mr. Drake, huh? Yes, he retired two years ago. We were married shortly after that. I see. Oh, um, cigarette? Thanks. I thought I had a lighter here somewhere. Lydia! Oh, Lydia! In here, George. Lydia, I thought you were going to... Oh, sorry. Didn't know we... you had company. This is Mr. Shane, George. Uh, hello. Uh, let me give you a light, Lydia. Thanks. George Hannah's Mr. Shane. He rents a room here. Oh, how are you? Have to make ends meet some way. You see, Shane, I'm the chief source of income for Mr. and Mrs. Drake. And in return, they give me a fairly decent room and the attic, which I've made over into a study. Uh, George, I'm sure Mr. Shane isn't interested. Well, I don't be too sure, Lydia. After all, most people are interested in the fact that I'm writing a book. Oh? As a matter of fact, some people seem to be extremely interested in your very charming housekeeper, Mrs. Lesperance. You know how I feel about Mrs. Lesperance, George. I believe I heard my name mentioned. Does somebody want me? My dear Mrs. Lesperance, I'm quite certain nobody wants you. George. Your humor matches the rest of your personality completely, Mr. Hannah. That's enough, Mrs. Lesperance. I'm sure Mr. Shane has better things to do than listen to this. Well, as a matter of fact, uh, I... Incidentally, Mr. Shane, I'm still not quite clear as to what you want. I think Mrs. Lesperance said Clarence... My husband sent you? Uh, yeah, yeah. He wanted me to get something out of his room and take it to him at the hospital. Oh, what was it? Why, a uh, leather case. A leather case? 
I see. So if you'll show me to his room, Mr. I... Mr. Drake's room's at the head of the stairs, Mr. Shane. Go right on up. <laughs> Charming little group. Well, I found the leather case in Drake's room. Yeah, it was empty, all right. I still couldn't figure out why Drake had sent me after it. I rearranged the furniture and put the leather case under my arm. Then I went downstairs. Oh, Mrs. Drake, I'm leaving now. Mrs. Drake? Mrs. Drake, where are you? Mrs. Lesperance? Mrs. Lesperance? What goes here? George! George! There was no answer from any of them. I poked around the downstairs rooms for a couple of minutes, but I couldn't find anyone. So I went outside. A light rain was falling. I started down the path toward my car, and then as I rounded a clump of bushes, a stick lashed out and caught me full on the shins. The pain doubled me over. Before I could straighten up again, something heavy came down on the back of my neck, and I flopped face down in the mud. I lay there stunned for a few seconds. I could feel someone grab the leather case away from me. By the time I got to my feet, there was no one in sight. I, I was still a little bleary, and I knew I'd have no chance of catching whoever it was, so I started walking down the path again. I got to my car, got in, and started the motor. Before I could pull away, a rugged-looking gent loomed up fast beside the car and jerked the door open. Get out. Hey, hey, what's the big idea? I said get out. Get your hands off of me. Okay, you get out the hard way. Hey, cut it out. Now, let's have it. Have what? The leather case. Who are you? That doesn't matter. Let's have that case. Oh, look, eh? but you the guy that clipped me a couple of minutes ago? What are you talking about? Because if you are, you ought to know I don't have the case anymore. And if you are, I got a couple of things to settle with you right now. Don't stall around, stupid. Let's have that case. I told you I don't have it. Okay. Okay, bright boy. Okay. Fist drove me back against the car, and he came at me. I put everything I had into a left hook, and I connected. He bounced back a couple of yards and went down. Then I saw him fishing around in his pocket. I figured he was going for a gun, and I also figured this was no place to be any longer. I dug out fast, and I didn't look back. I was on a side road leading to the highway. I made a sharp turn, and then I eased up a little. And then out of nowhere rode a dark sedan. It came at my car fast. And before I knew what was happening, the sedan sideswiped me. My car started skidding across the wet, slippery road. I tried to straighten it out, but I couldn't. I, I spotted a tree by the side of the road. My car was headed straight for it. I twisted the steering wheel again. No use. The side of my car crashed into the tree and bounced back. I snapped my head like a whip. Waves of blackness started flooding over me. I, I tried to fight them back. But after the hit on the head and the clip on the chin, this one was one too many. Yeah, this was the third strike on little Mike. And I went out. In a moment, we'll return to the new adventures of Michael Shane and the case of the borrowed heirloom. It all started when old Clarence Drake, who was recuperating in the hospital from a fall, hired me to go to his house in the country and bring back an empty leather jewel case. I went out there and met his wife, Lydia, the housekeeper, Mrs. Lesperance, and a guy named George Hannes. Well, I got the empty jewel case out of Drake's bedroom, came downstairs and found the house empty. So I started down the path toward my car. And then a number of things started happening to me, all of them bad. One, I was rabbit-punched and the leather case was lifted from me. Two, I tangled with a muscle man near my car. And three, I got away from him only to have a dark sedan sideswipe my car and send it into a tree. When I came to, I managed to get the car started. Drove to the hospital and went up to Clarence Drake's room. Well, Mr. Shane, back already? Back already, Mr. Drake. You found my house all right? I found your house all right. Well, did anything happen? Did anything happen? Did anything happen, you ask? Why, you lunatic, I, I'll tell you what happened. I got hit on the shins. I got hit on the back of my head. I got hit on the jaw. Someone ran my car into a tree and knocked me out. And you ask me if anything happened. Oh, that happened to you? Good. Good? Well, now, look, it you... It proves I was right. Well, now, isn't that real nice to know? Right about what? Someone is trying to get my jewels, Mr. Shane. Oh, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You, you mean you were just using me as, as bait? 
Well, I... Oh, now I've seen everything of all the... Mr. Shade, please don't be angry. Oh, no, no, I I should be delirious with joy, I suppose. I should be happy for these lumps on my head and my shins. I'm sorry about that, Mr. Shade. I really am. I didn't intend you should get hurt. Oh, well, it won't happen again, believe me. But, Mr. Shade, you gotta help me. Help you? No, Drake, you're gonna help me. Help you? Yeah, by never coming near me again. No, 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 please, Mr. Shane, I... Let me tell you about it, about myself. Okay, okay, tell me a story, but I'm warning you it's not gonna do you any good. Mr. Shane, I was married once before. My first wife passed away three years ago. And, well, I don't like to speak ill of the departed, but the plain fact is... She ruined me financially. How do you mean? She kept after me to buy jewelry for her, Mr. Shane. It was an obsession with her. She used to say she wanted them for heirlooms. Huh? She was always insisting I take her to jewelry stores and buy things for her. I did. Took all my money. After she died, I realized I was practically penniless. I've had a very hard time managing ever since. Well, I'm... Sorry to hear that, Mr. Drake. Doesn't sound like such a problem to me. you still got the jewelry, haven't you? Yeah. It's hidden in my bedroom at home. Why don't you sell the jewelry? I suppose I could do that, but I'd rather starve first. What? Yes. Sounds insane to you, doesn't it? Yeah, a little. I know. I couldn't really expect anyone to understand it. But... Well, my first wife wanted that jewelry to be kept as heirlooms, Mr. Shane, and so as badly as I need the money, I'd never sell the jewelry. Never. Because if that's what she wanted, well, that's what I want, too. Even though she ruined me, I loved her, Mr. Shane. Yeah, I guess you did. So, won't you please help me? Okay. Okay, I'll help you, Mr. Drake. Well, I was willing to admit I ought to have my head examined for sticking with Drake. But there was something about the little guy that had gotten to me all of a sudden. I drove back to the house in the country, parked my car, and started up the path. Then I stopped. The house was dark, except for an irregular pinpoint of light that moved around in Drake's room upstairs. Somebody was in there with a flashlight. I started for the house, and then the flashlight went off. I I ran up to the front door, but it was locked. I went around to the back of the house. The door there was unlocked. I opened it and went in. There, standing just inside the door, was the room of George Hanna's. Well, Mr. Shane. That's right, George. What are you doing here? Why, I live here, remember? Remember? Matter of fact, I was about to ask you what you're doing here. Look, when I was out here to get that leather case earlier this evening, everybody around here disappeared all of a sudden. Where were you? Why, I went out for a walk. Yeah? You weren't by any chance the guy who clipped me in the shins and on the back of the neck, were you? Me? (laughs) Hardly, Shane. Why would I do a thing like that? You could have had a reason. Or maybe you were driving that sedan that sideswiped me. My, my, what an imagination. You still haven't told me what you're doing. Not that it's any of your business, Junior, but Mr. Drake sent me. Oh, I see. (laughs) Still running errands for the old boy, hmm? Well, when I first moved in here, he used to have me galloping around running foolish errands for him. But I finally got wise to him. He's harmless, of course, but uh, just a little, shall we say, uh, strange. That's interesting to know, George. Incidentally, Drake will be getting out of the hospital pretty soon. Oh? Well, that's nice. It'll be good to have the old coot around again. I sort of miss him. Yeah, I'm sure you do. I'll see you later. I left George standing in the back hall and went toward the living room. There was a light on now, and Mrs. Drake was standing on the stairs. You're back again, Mr. Sheen. I'm back again, Mrs. Drake. What do you want this time? I'm not sure yet. Is that supposed to be a joke? No, it isn't. Mr. Drake wanted me to just uh, sort of look around a little. I see. Uh, Incidentally, uh, 
I didn't know until a little while ago that Mr. Drake had been married before. Yes. You, uh, knew his first wife? Slightly, enough to dislike her thoroughly. Oh? Uh-huh. Charming woman apparently threw away just about all of Mr. Drake's money. Of course, this is no concern of yours, Mr. Shane. Yeah, you're right. Well, if Mr. Drake wants you to poke around the place, go ahead. Please be brief. I will. I'm going to bed. Good night. Mm. Mrs. Lesperance, I, uh, uh, how long have you been hiding behind that door? I, I wasn't hiding. Come on, I... come on, don't give me that. All right, I, I was hiding. I was listening to you and Mrs. Drake. Yeah? Now look, just what's your angle in this deal, Mrs. Lesperance? My angle? Yeah, yeah, I got a strong hunch you're more than just a housekeeper around here. You know, maybe you're the one who's after Drake's jewelry. That's right, Mr. Shane. Huh? I've been trying to get Mr. Drake's jewelry for a long time. Well, I'll be... Look, maybe you're also the one who hit me over the head earlier tonight. Why, no, Or sideswiped my car. I don't know what you're talking about, Mr. Shane. I must admit I did hire a man to try to get the jewel case from you. The big ape who jumped me at, at my car was your boy, huh? Yes. Okay, that clears up one little item anyway. So you better start talking right now, Mrs. Lesprince. I want a lot of answers from you. Yes. I can't keep silent anymore. Even though I was sworn to secrecy, I must talk now. Sworn to secrecy? What are you talking about? I've been housekeeper here a good many years, Mr. Shane. I was here before the first Mrs. Drake died. And everything I've done has been done on her behalf. Now, look, you're you're leaving me way behind. Let's start at the beginning. All right, Mr. Shane. But not here. Come to my room, please. We can talk there. I followed her to a room at the back of the house, and we had a little talk. It was a short talk, but very interesting. Afterward, I walked out the front door, slipped the night latch, and slammed the door behind me. I got in my car, gunned it a couple of times, and pulled away. Made the sharp turn onto the side road, and then I stopped. Then I got out of my car and walked back toward the house. I guess I'd been waiting about 15 minutes when I saw the flashlight again in Mr. Drake's room. I eased up to the house and in the front door, turned the knob to Drake's door softly and went in the room. Then I spotted a figure holding a flashlight in one hand and prying a panel loose with the other. Just as I came up behind him, he got the panel off, reached in and pulled out a leather jewel case. I had a strong hunch this jewel case wasn't empty. Hello, George. (laughs) Shane. Finally found Drake's jewels, huh? How did you... So the old boy was off his trolley, huh? Maybe so, but not the way you think. Shane, Shane, maybe we can... Make a deal? I don't think so. Particularly after the way you rabbit-punched me earlier tonight. Now let's have the jewels. No. I said let's have them. I'll take the jewels, Mr. Shane. Well, Mrs. Drake. Yes. Lydia, thank heaven you... Shut up, George. Now neither of you is to move. I've called the police. The police? Lydia, are you out of your mind? Of course not. It's very simple. I caught the two of you trying to rob the house. I'm turning you over to the police. Mm, pretty neat. Lydia, if this is your idea of a joke... I think the lady means it, George. Why are you double-crossing Get her? Get back, Now, look, George. Mrs. Drake, you... You too, Mr. Shane. Yes, I'm turning you both over to the police, and I think I can make the case stick. I'm certain they'll believe me when I say I caught you both red-handed. Lydia, and until the police get here, let me assure you this gun's loaded. I won't hesitate to use it, if necessary, on either or both of you. In a moment, we'll be back with the thrilling climax to tonight's Michael Shane adventure. Well, there I stood with Mrs. Drake pointing a gun at me and at George, who was pretty obviously her ex-boyfriend right now. Lydia, you... I said shut up, Are you by any chance the one who sideswiped my car earlier, Mrs. Drake? Yes, I thought you had the jewels then. Later, when George told me the case he'd taken from you was empty, I realized the jewels must still be here. All this time you've been stringing me along while I tore this dump apart looking for the jewels, telling me what we were going to do when I found them. And all the while you were planning to double-cross me. Well, you won't get away with it. Oh, you're wrong, George. I will get away with it, because I've been smart. I wouldn't be too sure of that, Mrs. Drake. Well, I am sure. Why do you think I married Clarence? Why do you think I stuck with him these two years? 
Because I knew he had the jewels and had them hidden somewhere. I knew I'd find them someday and get out of here. You see, gentlemen, it's all very legal this way. I'm Clarence's wife, you know. I have a right to the jewels, even though he never wanted me to find them. Now they're mine, and it's all very smart and very legal. Uh Uh-uh. What do you mean? What you're getting is nothing, Mrs. Drake. Mr. Shane, don't try to tell me the jewels aren't genuine. Oh, they're genuine, all right. Take a look at them. Go ahead. They're beautiful. Yeah, and genuine. So genuine, they've still got the price tags on them. Price tags? Shane, I don't get it. Oh, it's really pretty simple. Drake told me his first wife spent all his money buying jewelry. It was really the other way around, you see. She spent all her money paying off for Drake to keep him out of trouble and out of jail. Out of jail? What are you trying to say? Drake is a kleptomaniac. A what? Yeah, he lifted all those jewels from various stores without their permission. That's a lie. Oh, no, it isn't. I got the whole story from Mrs. Lesperance just a few minutes ago. Drake's first wife asked her just before she died to find the jewels and return them. I guess she figured that way Drake's name would be cleared and she could rest easier. But, but what you say is true and... These are stolen jewels, and they... Then they're going back to their rightful owners, and I'll take care of that. No, you won't, Mr. Well, Shane. Drake! Clarence! Drop that gun, idiot! Drop it! Now give me the jewels. There. You know, Drake, up until I got the truth from Mrs. Lesperance, I was feeling sorry for you. A noble gent who'd starve rather than sell his wife's heirlooms. So all this time, it's been you and George, Lydia. You and George after my jewels. Clarence, well, what are you... Drake... Drake, don't do that. You and George, Lydia, after my jewel. Put down that gun, Drake. Get back, Shane. Get back. I lunged at him. Just as he pulled the trigger, my hand hit his arm. The slug wasn't under my nose and into the wall. Then I twisted the gun away from him hard, and he just sort of collapsed after that. Well, cops arrived about then. Took over. The cops, incidentally, that Lydia had called earlier... Very obliging of her, she discovered. And that's just about that. Except I got back my cigarette lighter that Drake had lifted from me. And now I'm waiting for the reward, though, on the jewelry. At least it'll be enough to have my car repaired. The next time anybody asks me to go get an empty jewel case for them, or any other fool thing like that, I'll... I'll... I'll probably do it. your director, Bill Russo, again. Our story is based on characters created by Brett Halliday and is written by Bob Wright. The music is composed and conducted by John Duffy, and Michael Shane is portrayed by Jeff Chan. The New Adventures of Michael Shane is a Don W. Sharp production, transcribed in Hollywood and distributed exclusively by the Broadcasters Guild. This is Andrea J. Graham, author of the Web Surface series. Oh, and a madam's wife. You're listening to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. Welcome back. Well, uh, the kleptomaniac explanation felt a little out of nowhere. I did like at the end where Mike uh, admitted, yeah, I'm probably going to... Uh, continue to take these sort of cases because I want to pay the bills and uh, these sort of odd cases are how I pay them. All right, well, now we do turn to the answer to the question, which was uh, what two names did uh, prof- did uh, Jeff Chandler work under professionally? The first was his given name, actually, Ira uh, Grossel. And then uh, on Frontier Town, which uh, Andrew Rines uh, did, uh, and I believe the archive will be available over at otrwesterns.com, uh, he went up by Tex Chandler. So that was fun. Thanks so much for that uh, trivia question uh, to Randy. And that will actually do it for today. Uh, join us back here tomorrow for the Avenger and next Monday another episode of Michael Shane. 
In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook.